We all know Boston had the easiest run ever to that championship. They did. Can they, they back did. it up? That's all. They Can did. Can you back it up? Like, okay, okay, you had an easy they run. Did. Don't matter. You won it. Can you back it up? What you going to do, Philly? They did. Paul George. They did. Joel and B. What you going to do, Milwaukee? Hey. Huh? But Orlando. What y'all going to do? Miami. What, like, hey. Some so in the East. Memphis. Flashback. I like Dallas in this series. I like the way they're playing. I think this is a little special for Kyrie. Maybe a little special for uh, Porzingis as he plays because I know he played in Dallas, but I think I like Dallas in this series. But overall in the series, I do think Dallas has been more battle-tested, and I do think in seven games, Dallas will win. That is your prime example of the mainstream NBA media not only failing to give the Celtics the credit they deserve, but actually taking away credit, in this case in hypocritical fashion. The reason Boston went 16-3 and in 2024's playoffs had nothing to do with them having an easy path to a title, and everything to do with them making it look easy by obliterating the competition. The narrative that they had an easy path is directly countered by how many were picking against them, including Shaq and Udonis. As I predicted in 2023's summer, this team was built for a championship since day one, but many, or should I say the majority of the media, did everything in their power to stand in front of that. After continuing my channel's series of respecting the world champions, we'll look at a ruthless compilation put together by a certain Celtics fan page that exposes every negative take that's aged poorly. One of the players who hasn't received enough respect amidst the respect I've tried to give the Celtics this offseason is king of the half-court heave Peyton Pritchard. Peyton hit two half-court shots in the finals, one of which that was in the closeout game 5 and was the longest shot in a finals game since 1998. Foreshadowing this against the Wizards during the season, Pritchard drained one from the exact same spot as his game 5 heave, a game that he made two from beyond half court, however the second was too late. Nonetheless, over the course of his career, he's made Hail Mary daggers like these resemble wide open mid-rangers, which is why it was so fitting that he hit one in the Celtics closeout game 5. It was one of the craziest moments because when he let it loose from so far out, you had a feeling he was going to hit it based off his skill level of hitting such far away shots, but for him to have actually executed the heave is something you can't put into words. You just had to be there. Another one of those half-court heaves came in the conference semifinals, a series overall which saw Fast PP be a massive contributor. Pritchard was the Celtics' fifth leading scorer in the series, as he averaged 11.2 points in 23 minutes over 5 outings, and posted a 55-50-100 shooting split. One of Shaq's takes before the finals aged particularly bad. And I've been anxious to see Luka, this is like my first time seeing him a lot. Big body, bigger than I thought he was, stronger than I thought he was. Once he gets you on the side, sort of like a big man, he does whatever he wants, plays with poise, and he can be shook. To Shaq's surprise, Jalen Brown was a nuisance for Luka, as when defended by Brown in the NBA Finals for 154.4 possessions and 32 minutes and 4 seconds of matchup time, Luka scored an inefficient 21 points. Most significantly, it was the most matchup time logged by a Celtics player versus an opponent in any round of the postseason. Luka stays, I say. If Luka stays, keep me in. Unlike Shaq said when getting a player on his side, Doncic was unable to play with poise and was actually shook. On this possession, he gets Jalen on his side as he begins to use a high Gafford ball screen, only for Brown to relentlessly press up to cut off the angle and reach in just as Luka goes around the pick. Doncic gets Brown on his side again by using a curry slide before crossing half, but Brown gliding with the dribble move and again reaching in nets him another steal and throwdown. This time when on Luka's side, Brown opts to trail Luka hard and just being in the vicinity intimidates the layup. Hustling back in transition, Brown catches Doncic completely off guard as no one lets Luka know who's coming but elite hustle and instincts from Jalen nonetheless. Checking Doncic in the post, Brown's lower body strength and positioning force the brick of a bunny. It's that type of pressure that makes Luka want to settle for shots like these, which Jalen gets a hand up to. Fighting over the Maxi Kleba screen seamlessly, Brown clogs Doncic's airspace to the fullest extent and forces a leaning back midi that comes up short. Even after falling for this hezzy, watch the recovery by Brown to get back to make this a tough three that pops out. In a full court press, 
Here, Brown's able to speed Luka up and in turn throw his rhythm off as Doncic tries to draw the foul to no avail. We talked about some of the records set by Drew Holiday a few videos back, but didn't mention Holiday's World Class Game 2 specifically and the record he set in it. Drew had a team-high 26 points on 11 for 14 shooting and also had 11 rebounds, 3 assists, plus both a steal and a block. In what turned out to be a 7-point game after the Mavs made a late run, Holiday's production was paramount in the victory, and in turn he became the first player to have at least 25 points and 10 rebounds on at least 75% shooting from the field with 0 turnovers in a finals game of all time. Holiday went 9 for 9 in the paint, which registered as the second most field goals from that area he made in either the regular season or playoffs, from pressure relieving in the corner off well-placed kickouts by getting downhill, to constantly retrieving facilitations from Tatum in the pocket and forming a lethal two-man game with JT early and often, which the Mavs couldn't stop over and over, to finishing fast break bunnies, Drew's offense was devastating for Dallas. Three of his points were triggered by a top defensive play though, as after deflecting a pass from PJ Washington, he then makes a brilliant second effort by helping force a Doncic turnover with his ball pressure, which ultimately leads to a spot up triple for him that gave Boston an 11 point lead with under 5 minutes left. Out of the timeout to close out game 2, Drew would recover after getting initially shook by a Kyrie combo to force the miss before on the other side, collecting the Tatum rebound drawing the eyes of all five Mavs with a drive entry which collapses the D to open up Derek White, who he finds for the triple. With all due respect to the Time Lord Robert Williams III and 2023 Sixth Man of the Year Malcolm Brogdon, Brad Stevens pulled off one hell of a swindle to acquire this man Drew from Portland. That was definitively a trade for the ages. For as talented as Boston is with players like Holiday being a fifth option at times, it's a shame the Celtics had to deal with everything they did from the media all season long. That's what makes the recent takes from Shaq so much more frustrating. If you don't know what I mean, without further ado, brought to us by the at Celtics Unite 18 X account, which I recommend you go follow, we'll end today's video with five straight minutes of the Boston Celtics being discredited. In one game, Giannis and Dame are more compatible and have less redundancy than the seven-year career of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Ask yourself this. Name the last great NBA champion that was bad at home in the playoffs. There's nothing to fear about the Celtics. Nobody fears the Celtics. Nobody's afraid to go into the Garden. Certainly not Miami. They win games on talent, Ernie. They don't win on toughness and defense. Which team are you hearing could win a championship that you just don't see it? Overrated? Boston. Wow. Boston. We wouldn't see the Boston Celtics having the kind of problem, as great as they've been, we wouldn't see them playing this way or having the kind of problem they had with Ime Udoka as their coach. They are becoming the Buffalo Bills. I'm sorry. 759. In the last 50. 30 years, Boston has been irrelevant in basketball history. We want to say Boston out the East, but they never can get it done. I just don't have no faith in them. The it factor. They don't have it. Whatever yeah. it is, they don't have it. Don't go, no. <laughs> I have to say Milwaukee or Miami is who I would pick in a series. I believe Giannis and Dame are closers, and they can use a lot of fouls. And Jimmy, Bam, and Spo, nobody has more experience than them. Can Tatum and Brown get it done together? No. Why not? I said too much of the same player. They don't compliment each other enough. Who is their leader? Who is their go-to guy? Who is the guy who brings it home? Jason Tatum is the guy that's supposed to lead them. Yep. And I just have not seen it. I've, con seen, I've consistently seen it the other way. Dylan Brown wants to be that guy. He does. But doesn't quite have the game to be that guy. You have the other Joe Mazzulla who just stands over there and you want to like if you take his brain out and you put it in the bird, the bird is going to start flying flying so I would take Anthony Edwards over Jason Tatum right now in a heartbeat. I don't know who the dogs are for the Boston Celtics. I, I don't see that from Tatum and Brown. I know that they're immensely talented. They're all NBA caliber guys. But I don't see them elevate themselves and elevate their teammates. It's very strange when I look at the Boston Celtics. Like just how they rely on winning basketball games worries me when it comes to playoffs. They're a team that falls in love with shooting jump shots. I don't know that they have that person 
that is going to grab this team by the throat. The identity is the issue here. They're having an identity crisis when the games matter most the last two years because if Coach Udoka was on the squad coaching this team, they take on his identity, his tenacity. I'm taking, I'm taking Minnesota over Boston with where we are now. In this finals, they will have the two best players in the finals, Luka and Kyrie. I'll take Derek Lively over Porzingis. Me personally. Well, the Celtics do not have three or four guys that can guard Luka. I like Dallas in this series. Uh, Who do you have winning the whole darn thing? Dallas. I got Dallas winning. I think Dallas is deeper. I got the Mavs in six okay. in Dallas. I'm going Dallas. Okay. Also, Luka, MVP in six. What duo would you rather have in the NBA fight? Mm. Luka and Kyrie. Mm. In one and a half seasons, Kyrie and Luka have more, have meshed better than, than Jalen and Jason That's have true. after six seasons. Boston, they haven't been battle tested. I don't know if that's a good thing to get battle tested yeah, in the finals. True. I don't know if you want to get battle tested yeah, yeah, in the yeah. finals. Yeah. I don't know if you want to be battle tested by Denver or Minnesota or one of those teams. That might be too late to get battle tested. <laughs> Who has the early edge in the series? Mavs, Celtics. Mavs. Mm. I'm going to the team that has the two best superstars. Yeah. I'm taking Ooh. Kyrie Ooh. and I am taking Luka. OKC okay. okay, and Denver <gasps> and Minnesota. Minnesota, they don't play defense like that. But let's just say those three teams go up against Boston. Any three of those teams play defense against Boston, the way they're playing offense, Boston will be swept. It's, it's, it's the sense of urgency, right? It's the, the laid back being cool. Jason Tatum saying, Oh, people don't expect us to lose games. Well, we don't. And I'm waiting on this Jason Tatum moment, right? We didn't, we've been talking about Tyrese Maxey, Jalen Bronson, Anthony L was Donovan Mitchell. When are we going to talk about Jason Tatum? What point do you stop and say, you know what? Let's figure something else out. You do realize, Jay, and you know this. You never know who's watching. You have NBA scouts in the stands. The Celtics are showing that they're vulnerable. They need to be playing their best basketball going into the postseason. Right now, I don't think it's anybody in the Eastern Conference that's fearing the Boston Celtics. I really don't. I really, really don't.